Welcome to Field Sports Britain in the second of two programmes to come to you from the USA. Don't worry, next week we're back in jolly old Britain. Coming up, we're taking an in-depth look at kits you won't have seen in your wildest dreams or worst nightmares. We're visiting a gun shop that's slightly different to the ones we get in the UK. First, we're back in Sportsman's Paradise, Louisiana after Duck, Coyote and Hogzilla. Americans enjoy hunting both of their hog varieties. There are the wild boar, known as the ridgeback, and the wild pigs, domesticated breeds, gone feral. The wild boar grow to around 300 pounds and have a reputation for being aggressive. The feral pigs are much, much bigger. Uh, later on we'll be going out after some feral hogs. We've got some property on Bayou Portage that has uh, been rife with them lately and uh, we'll go see if we can see a few of those and uh, try and call in a couple of coyotes. We need to walk through the swamp to a high seat next to a wallow. First, I'm given my cowboy-style rifle. It's a lever-action Marlin 3030, one of the guns that won the West. Pretty standard American lever-action. Uh, loads in here, lever here. So, uh, just cowboy-style to load it. Lever out, lever in, it's loaded. Hammer's back, okay? It's ready to go. Pop that, uh, that is the safety. John's is less cowboy, more militia. It's a modern version of the SKS, a forerunner to Mikhail Kalashnikov's AK-47. Ideal for pigs, especially decadent American capitalist running dog scum pigs. Semi-auto, absolutely. Yeah, uh, fully autos, uh, I don't like Swiss pigs. <laughs> With a slightly sicky feeling that Kylies are hiding behind every tree, we head off. John says that the pigs are not scared by the torch beam. They can even be attracted by it, though their senses of smell and hearing are excellent. You'll find a lot of times uh, tracks along sides of these saloos uh, where they've come into water, wallow uh, or water. And uh, oftentimes if you check the clarity of the water, you can tell how lately they've been in. If it's very, very cloudy, you know, they've been in wallowing, cooling down from, from the hot sun recently. Uh, this water uh, looks fairly clear. That's why you're not whispering. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm imagining they haven't been through here in a bit. We'll check another couple of wallows and uh, try and spot some tracks on the way back. A few hundred yards in and we get the unmistakable whiff of pig pee. John has been putting some old burger buns down and we can see they have been to this boggy burger king. Suddenly there's a lot of noise and something is coming towards us, fast. It's moving really fast to be an armadillo. Both of us chamber around and raise our rifles. I feel a wave of immense relief, tinged with disappointment when an armadillo breaks cover. So we just came up on the hamburger stall pigs on the ground here and then John slammed off the light we could hear rustling in the bushes and your heart starts racing and thank goodness it's an armadillo. <laughs> I really thought we'd be in touch with the pig there but I'm quite relieved when I was. Ha! Armadillo schmarmadillo. Good job there isn't anything really terrifying out there. Now America has a new and dangerous quarry species this year. The zombie. Of course they don't exist. Or do they? Okay, so you know how we ask you to send in your pics? It all starts right here in the swamps of Louisiana. Last year, a local hunter claimed he found his trail cam smashed. He retrieved the card from it and found this picture. Fake or not, it has helped fuel a craze for zombie target shooting. It's not just one company riding this bandwagon. There are loads offering cartridges, knives, chainsaws, chainsaws, 
Even brand giant Hornady has brought out a zombie bullet. The clue is, it has a green tip. These targets with the weeping jammy goo are selling like hot cakes and are coming in all shapes and politically incorrect sizes. It's a five billion dollar industry between video games and movies, TV shows, you know there's a new movie coming out, World War Z with Brad Pitt, and it's just a growing industry and we're just getting a lot of great feedback because, you know, because zombies are such a huge thing. You know they got zombie ammunition, zombie firearms, you know throughout the whole show there's countless products about people we're working with that want to co-brand with us because you know if you have this zombie gun you need some you need some zombies to shoot also protecting the american public from zombie attack are a range of special shotgun cartridges being advertised in this film they come in a variety of gauges 410 20 bore but they are blanks and intended say the manufacturers for recreational use hmm whatever that means this round produces a tremendous amount of noise, a huge muzzle flash, theatrical almost in its effect. And again, it's recreational. Um, it has, it, it's not for accuracy where you're putting holes in a target. It's, it's just for having fun with firearms if you do it safely. So what if you accidentally mix these cartridges with real cartridges? Not recommended by, by any. This, this is real bullets uh, or real ammunition. It, it's a real threat. It's not intended to shoot at people. Uh, if, if you're going to shoot at a zombie target or something along those lines, fine. All rules of firearm safety apply. If you got a real gun, it's a real threat, so you have to treat it accordingly. So, no, this is not a recreational force-on-force -force type of uh, paintball load, not by any means. Oh, my God. The question remains, why are American shooters so keen on shooting zombies? Is it because they are human-like targets but don't come with the shame and guilt people feel when they shoot more human, human targets? Some people might say that the reason we chose a zombie because you're supposed to shoot zombies. When a zombie's coming after you, you got to, you know, destroy the undead is our tagline and that's kind of what we wanted to do. Or you're not shooting a human target, you're shooting the undead target. So here you are, zombie targets coming to a graveyard near you. Now it's over to David, who is already within sound of the peal of English church bells, happily back on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. The RSPB in Scotland is stepping up its campaign against shooters. It used a £200,000 government grant to buy a large area of salt marsh and floodplain in Wigtown Bay in 2010. It now wants to ban shooting along 75% of that coastline. Local wildfowlers point out that the RSPB is using public money to take away public rights. Former head of the UK Field Army, Lieutenant General Sir Barney White Spunner, is to take control of the Countryside Alliance. He takes on the job on the 9th of February and will be based at the Alliance's London headquarters. Kate Huey, MP, will remain chair of the board of the Countryside Alliance. The government is being forced to relax gun laws for the London 2012 Games. UK border officials reveal that 390 Olympic shooters will bring in 780 firearms. When they arrive at London Heathrow, firearms will be collected and transported by approved handlers to vehicles driven by London 2012 organisers, which will transport them to the Royal Artillery Barracks in Woolwich for the Games. Right. Farmers who sign up to the pilot Badger Coles will remain anonymous, says the National Beef Association. This follows threats of violence against farmers in previous Badger Cole sites. The MBA is confident the two pilot areas in Gloucestershire and Somerset will achieve their objective of proving that shooting is a safe, humane and effective way to cull badgers, enabling the policy to be rolled out further in 2013. And finally, an Alaskan fishing charter boat has made an unusual catch and the photographs are doing the rounds on the internet. The boat's captain saw the four young black-tailed bucks swimming out of their depth, trying to cross a channel. He hauled them aboard, took them ashore, and set them free. You're now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Now, to be a shot show star, you have to be a colossal personality. One man dominates the world of coyote calling, which is very like our fox calling. And he's a really big noise. This is a company that specialises in enticing your quarry to come and have a closer look. Some of the products are so intriguing they have the same effect on people. 
we get the boss to tell us about his latest gyrating, fluffy, squeaking creations. This, this is called a stray cat. <laughs> and this tail, my batteries are out, but this thing never makes the same movement twice in a row. So imagine that you're a farmer, you step outside and you see your cat out there and your cat's out there digging in a hole or digging in a bush. And as that cat listens to the mouse or the rat or the squirrel or the chipmunk that he's after or whatever, that tail is communicating stuff. And as that, as that cat smells that rat, he, he gets excited. And then, he, then, the, then the mouse doesn't move and the tail stops. And then the tail goes like that. So the cat is communicating, whether he knows it or not, to everything that's looking at him as to what he's doing. And that's what that tail does. So when the fox comes up on that decoy, that tail is doing all kind of movements and he's like all right i'm gonna give me a cat you know and it's, so it's a great idea but isn't yeah. there something inherently dodgy about using cats to attract coyotes and foxes I mean, they're doing it right now what i mean the other day i was at home and i live in the suburbs and i let my little toy poodle i have a toy poodle trained like a lab love her to death she's 13 years old and i took her out there and i'm standing there and i looked over and there's a coyote bent down about 75 yards from me watching us if i wasn't there with her got my little poodle and gone. Are you going to do a poodle decoy next year? I might. And I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to shoot more than once too. I do not want nobody touching my little girl. Her name is Annabelle. <laughs> Watch out for the UK foxing version. A vibrating baby in a buggy? The SHOT Show is not all about looking at stuff in booths in a big tin shed. We also get to go out into the Nevada desert and try it out. Just got out here to the peace and quiet of the desert. Not. Everybody is having a lovely time firing guns at targets. I picked up these for my air rifle. Don't you just love America? Of course I get to shoot those pesky zombies and hopefully this piece of hardware will stop them undead in their tracks. The gun I'm using to shoot it is not actually an automatic rifle, it's a semi-auto. The stock is loaded on a spring and the recoil of the rifle brings the trigger bouncing off your finger, which makes it behave well like an automatic, a machine gun. You know, our Home Secretary is going to hate you. <laughs> <laughs> no, they'll love us. <laughs> as well as the super modern, there is the hilariously old fashioned. So it's not all about hunting, is it? What, what, what does this do? Uh, uh, th this is a reproduction of the 1877 Colt Gatling Bulldog, or Bulldog Gatling gun. Uh, and it, it's a reproduction, but it's very, very accurate. Uh, all the parts in here can be put in an original gun and still used. And what would you use this for? Well, uh, originally the, the US military had them. Uh, this particular model, went out west during the, the, the Plains Indian Wars. This one? Yes, this model, yes. Can I have a go? Sure. It's loaded with 20 rounds. Crank it clockwise and you, you, can, you can fire all 20. <laughs> that gun was bold and brassy, and so are the natives. My four-year-old grandson calls me a month after he's there, and he says, he says, Pop, he says, do you know you can't have a gun in London? I said, yes. He says, can you believe it? You can't have a pistol in London. Can you believe that? He's four. Fantastic well, kid. Fantastic kid. Welcome to America. He's fantastic. He's going to be a footy player like crazy. He's a charger. God bless you guys. Way out here in the desert, it's not just guns, guns, guns. Here is some other stuff. Stuff. Get it? It's just so imaginative. This is Safari Club International's mobile exhibition to take around blind kids so they can touch and feel big game. These UTVs are more Daisy Duke than Boss Hog, with a choice of power supplies and kinder to the environment. Uh, you don't have exhaust, so you don't have smelly emissions that the game can smell that can scare them away, and you don't have the sound of a gas engine. You can really sneak right into your deer blind, your duck blind, or whatever game you're hunting that particular day, get right up to where you're going to hunt in an electric vehicle, whereas a gas vehicle, the noise and the emissions really will scare the game off. Now, Georgia, are those 
boys for the Boxwoods actually buying electric vehicles? They are in, in large numbers. In fact, the 4x4 electric segment is really one of the fastest growing segment in four-wheel drive uh, UTVs right now. Good. It's a little bit faster in gas. Let's eat desert dirt. I said, let's eat dirt. Okay, I'm going as fast as I can. This overtaking maneuver was slightly hampered by the fact that I still had the handbrake on. All this innovation that is yet to make it to Europe. It is good to find products that we have had for a year. Uh, we actually had the Duralette before you. Well, that's a little bit unusual. <laughs> it's very unusual indeed. Um, what's it like representing a European company over here? Is it, is it easy? Other people like homemade stuff. Well, Zeiss has been part of my life for the past 21 years. I've been with three different divisions, so I'm, I'm pretty used to representing Zeiss. And Americans like it. They recognize quality. They, you know, they, they, they see the point. The Zeiss reputation, our brand is very strong over here, and they know it's uh, synonymous with quality. Another major launch we had in Europe first is the Browning B725. It is called the Sitori here in the USA, a name designed to get it in the next series of the Sopranos. You may have seen it on our programme two weeks ago, but those Yankees are quick to catch up and there is time to use this new gun in a high-stakes clay competition. I won a prize for hitting a clay. I'm in the Wild West and I'm in Tweed. This, this will hold an edge a little bit longer, so this will be better for cardboard and all that fun stuff. This will be better just for day-to-day -day use. Well, you know, we've got a newsreader on our channel called David, so I, I, th I think I'm going to get him. I think he's going to like this one. Is, is well, that right? Case. Yeah, perfect. Is that, is that, that's absolutely perfect for David, don't you think? All this hunting and shooting kit would be pointless without hunters and shooters to use it. Its next stop after the shot show and on its way to the field is in the great American gun shop. At 150,000 square feet, this place is three times the size of an out-of-town British supermarket. We're back in Las Vegas and this shop is humongo phantasmagorically enormous. It's a Bass Pro, one of three big chains that dominate American hunting and shooting shopping. Opinion is divided as to whether Cabela's, Gander Mountain or Bass Pro is the best shop. They are certainly popular. The Cabela's in both Kansas and Minnesota rank amongst the top tourist destinations in both of those states. And they get more than twice as big as the one in Las Vegas. Bass Pro's shop in Missouri is a third of a million square feet. That's the same size as six football pitches or the whole of the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul. British gun shops are traditionally pokey little things stuck down back streets, but this is America. I am off to see a gun shop owner whom I met hunting driven wild sheep in Germany. He runs a gun shop that's small compared to Bass Pro, but offers a warmer and more friendly service. And it is still twice the size of any UK gun hey, shop. Charlie, how are you doing? <laughs> nice to see you. Nice, nice to see, see you, you again. again. So, um, you call this a bit of a tiddler. Uh, it's fair size, fair size, for, for around here. We're, we're pretty big here, but there, there are bigger stores. So. Can you show me around? Yeah, sure. Come on. Louisiana is hurricane country, and when Hurricane Katrina hit nearby New Orleans, it caused both spectacular devastation and billions of dollars of damage. It was, however, a bonanza for Jim. So, Jim, Hurricane Katrina was a relatively exciting time for you here in Louisiana. Oh, indeed, indeed. Lots, lots of unrest. Uh, it was very, very busy for us. Uh, it was a very crazy time. When you say it was very busy, I mean, what was the shop like? Before you could buy your firearm and leave with it, about anywhere from six to eight hours for three days. What, a six to eight hour queue yes. for three days? Exactly. Sorry. How many guns did you sell in that time? Uh, hundreds and hundreds. Literally, we had one person doing nothing but calling in background checks. Uh, we had distributors coming in with literally truckloads of guns and ammunition. And why did everybody want these guns? Uh, it was a time of unrest. Uh, people were uh, fearful and they were looking for security. Also, a lot of military, uh, police, fire department lost all their guns underwater. So not only you have civilians coming in, but you also have your local uh, police departments, fire departments, things like that, buying guns, ammunition, holsters, cleaning supplies. Just everything went underwater so quickly. Now, you've also got some fun stuff here, haven't you? Oh, yeah. We've got something uh, really unique that I'm sure a lot of people would like to see. It's a, a 410 revolver. Oh, can have a look? Oh, yes, go. 
So Jim, just precisely what is that? Well, basically these are two Taurus 410 revolvers. And uh, this one right here um, will shoot the 410 and the 45 Long Colt. Okay. And what is very popular here uh, for a snake gun. Uh, crawfish farmers, uh, things like that. Uh, deer hunters during the summer that are maintaining their land. They like this to dispatch snakes. Snakes. What sort of snakes do you get here? Uh, let's say it's a big water moccasin. Big water moccasin. Yeah. I hate that. Now you want two hands on this one. Yeah, I almost came out of your hand. <laughs> <laughs> I've managed to hit snakes in a kind of four foot radius. Well, that's it. You, you didn't miss. And you even put some right in the extra room. Yeah, look at that. Four, yeah. four shots, four in the middle. <laughs> four pellets in the middle. And quite a lot on the outside as well. Well, that's a big snake. It's a, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Exactly. Disguised as a man. There you go. <laughs> of course, all the staff hunt. I dove hunt, duck hunt, squirrel hunt, deer hunt, um, coyote. Sometimes um, I've hog hunted. Um, I think that's about it. That's pretty well more animals than we have in the UK. <laughs> yeah, just about everything. Um, what did, you, did you grow up doing this? Uh, ever since I was about ten. And is this is this normal for a, for a Louisiana girl? Um, it's somewhat normal. Have you ever shot a gator? Um, no, I have not. I've caught one though. You caught one. I've caught one. In your bare hands. Um, I I was fishing one day and I was reeling in my spinnerbait and it snapped my line and I reeled it in and I caught it. <laughs> it was about five foot long. <laughs> Self-defense is a major theme of American gun shops. In the UK, we have all but forgotten about sidearms following the restrictions which came in 15 years ago. Jim gives me a refresher course. Well, there you go. Look, you're already. Watch that thumb. Oh, yeah. Grab and determine to get it cut. Nine, eight, oh, those, those must be mine there. Yeah. Not too bad. Not too bad. I mean, he's done. It's the first time in a long time you've yeah, probably shot exactly. him. Yeah, exactly. 15 years. He's out, he's, 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 he's crawling away. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'd rather it was as a rabbit target, actually, still. <laughs> with the London Olympics coming up and Britain in with a chance for shooting medals, with handgun crime rising massively in the wake of the handgun laws, surely now is the time for the British government to start relaxing restrictions on handgun ownership in the UK. We were in Louisiana last week. I was out after white-tailed deer, and Ian Harford of Team Wild was out after giant rats racing across the swamp. If you want to see more about Team Wild, click on the roary thing just there. There, it roared. And it, it straight back so in the you buy your gun and your four-pocket pants in your favourite real tree camo, and you head out to hunt duck. John takes us to see a typical duck blind in Louisiana's Lake Martin. Are those decoys? Yeah, that's uh, it's a pretty nice spread. They'll uh, they'll leave them out here for the duration of the season. Um, if you leave them out too long, the local ducks know what they are and will kind of avoid them like the plague. So really, what you're trying to get out of a blind like that is uh, migratory ducks, just the flybys that aren't too familiar with the area. Entering the hide is not as easy as it looks. There we go. Once installed, we are not Brilliant. expecting to see anything, but there are Thanks, some sir. mallard circulating. Don't want anybody hunting out of your blinds, you know. Very, very protective of the ducks around here, everyone is. Hang on a second, very protective of the duck hunting. Of the duck hunting, yes, absolutely. Oh, exactly unprotective of the ducks. That's it. John distributes the Primos duck it, calls <laughs> and resets to waiting. The shot, when it happens, is a trifle ambitious, really? so no duck in the bag there. Most locals don't bother going duck hunting until the last half hour of daylight. The real action is wood duck shooting. For that, we head into the woods, looking out for bears and, of course, zombies. The bends in the slough, uh, and sloughs like this are really good places to hunt wood ducks uh, because if you notice we're, we've got a lot of oak around and the fallen acorns will uh, gather in the bins and sort of pile up and they'll come in and, and feed a bit. What's bin? Bend, uh, turn. Bend. Bend. <laughs> Bend. Do speak English man. <laughs> 
Every day, the local game department sets a curfew on duck shooting, moving it by two minutes a day. Today, it's 5.43 p.m. We are, of course, using steel shot to shoot duck here. So how enthusiastic are American duck shooters about steel? Because in the UK, most people hate it, and they hate being bust into using it. Do American hunters resent having to use steel? Not at all. Not at all. I, I think everyone recognised that uh, in those areas, and particularly the, the wetlands that, that were affecting our waterfowl, I mean, I think anybody would be willing to do whatever they need to to save our or waterfowl species, and that was certainly something that needed to be done. James, you're, you're you know, younger than Joe, you're mm -hmm. from the younger generation. Do you agree with him on that? Um, I would agree that, that there, we need to be using steel shot to conserve our wetlands, um, but it doesn't kill as well as, as some other as lead, so it's, uh, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit harder to, to kill the birds dead. It's more clean killing to shoot them with lead, but uh, absolutely 100% agree with Joe that we needed to do it to conserve our wetlands. The view from U.S. cartridge manufacturers is the same. You know, we've been pretty comfortable with it lately, the last several decades. It makes sense. We need to shoot steel or non-tox alternatives like tungsten. And Black Cloud really helps out the steel market. That's one of the things we went after is, you know, steel, you can only drive it so fast. And that's how you made steel more lethal. You put more energy behind it, behind it by making it go faster. Well, now Black Cloud, with a cutting edge on it, it actually hits and cuts, tears. So we see this kind of steel more lethal, and it compares itself more like a tungsten-based product. We meet some of the Brits at the SHOT Show, among them cartridge company Lyle Vale Express. And the steel debate is not the level playing field we thought. There's more than one way to put steel up your barrel. The problem we have in Europe isn't producing steel shot, it's producing the lethality in game loads that we need. Uh, competition loads is widely used partly because they're now a bit cheaper than lead. Uh, but in um, hunting loads, we can't produce them above a momentum which is laid down by CIP. And really, they need to be faster, and the momentum rule needs to be taken off to make them suitable for hunting. Back in Louisiana, it's 5.43pm, and we get a no-show from the wood duck. We can hear them all around us, but they do not come. Perhaps they are extra wary because of the sheer number of people who go shooting in the USA. Now some really serious hardware, not exactly hunting and uh, sports shooting. Barrett has a new sniper rifle. I invented uh, or designed a 50 caliber rifle when I was 27 years old. There was nothing else like it out there. Uh, you know, I hit the, hit the ground running with it uh, from a gravel floor, floor garage until it's adopted by over 60-something different governments. So whenever you think of Barrett, you think of high efficiency, big calibers, low recoil, badass, get the job done. Now, you hope I can say that, but it, it gets the job done. And, and now Barrett's becoming known as highly accurate. You know, it's you know the 50 caliber is never the, the the most accurate round in the world, but the 338s and the 30 calibers that we're into now with the with the 98B and the M Red, uh, we're shooting we're shooting five bullets all in the same hole at 100 meters, so it's totally changing the way people look at at uh, uh, at Barrett. We're still that we're still that badass company, but you know we're also the most accurate company. Back to Louisiana again, and we're still reaching for the pork crackling. America has big pigs, really big pigs, and not all of them are called Bubba. Here is one shot with a handgun by an 11-year-old lad in Alabama. It weighed more than a thousand pounds. I am six foot four inches and can be easily impressed by a five pound armadillo. Imagine how the kid felt. John and I stalk through the swamp, which has a gumbo-like consistency. Gumbo is local stew that tastes exactly like it sounds. Soon we reach an old duck hide, or blind in American. So we've got a good 150 yards of visibility to take a shot on them. As soon as we see them break those bushes, we'll hold off. We'll give them a little time to get as close in front of us as we can. Just stay trained on them the whole time, keep our scopes on them. As soon as they get close enough that we're comfortable taking that shot, we'll put lights on them and fire away and see what we've got. We sit and wait. And we wait. 
Then John reckons it's time to go and see the boar face to face. After the little scare earlier on, the approaching armadillo, John now thinks it's a good idea we go after them on foot. Brilliant. Another wild big hamburger joint, but this one looks undisturbed. John reckons we'll have to put tonight down as unlucky. So we've got to the end point. Feeling a bit defeated by duck, a bit beaten by ball, they hadn't touched the bait. But you cannot beat the excitement of stalking up on something that could easily be stalking up on you. It's not a, it's not a lion or a tiger, it's a big, but it's a great big thing in a very, very dark woods. It is absolutely brilliant. Above all, this part of the United States is truly gorgeous. For more on hunting with John, visit www.doublegunguide.com or the landowner's website, www.bayuteshhuntingpreserve.com. Well, we're back next week, and if you are watching this on YouTube, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button that's somewhere around the outside of the screen there, or go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. Scroll down to the bottom where you'll find the constant contact box. Stick your email address in there, and we can constantly contact you, or click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. This has been Field Sports Britain from America. Yippee Kai A.